Hi guys, welcome to this tutorial on the Cactus Towers by Bjork Engels Group. Now, this tower you can see has a couple of very interesting components. So the first thing that stands out to me are these slabs. Right, so you got these concrete slabs that are at different angles throughout the building. And then the second element I see is this, these ribs that kind of flow down the building and connect each floor together. And the third thing that I notice is the handrails that you see over here. Okay, so we're gonna try and do all this in Grasshopper. Now, of course, the goal is not to model this exactly, right? We can just do that in Rhino, but the goal is to have a parametric model so we can start playing with the forms. So let's just go ahead into Rhino and Grasshopper and see what we can do. So I'm just gonna start with my template here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the slabs. So we'll just rename this as slabs. And instead of creating a rectangle here, I'm just gonna start by creating a rectangle in Rhino. I'm just gonna make one that's about 50 feet by 50 feet. So five zero feet by five zero feet. I'm going to center this. So I'm going to move this from its center to zero. All right, so I have a rectangle here that I can bring into Grasshopper, right? So just type in curve and going to call this slab boundary just so I can help keep track of things. And right click, set one curve, and that brings that curve in to Grasshopper. Okay, so now I need to make multiple slabs, right? So I start to I need to start moving these slabs that I have upwards in the Z direction. Okay, so what I need is the move command. So M O V E, move this geometry in the Z direction. And now I can set, say, a slab height. So let's say I want the slab to be, I don't know, let's say 12 feet. So I can use just make a slider called 12. And since I'm working in inches, I do need to multiply this by 12 as well. So I can just type multiply and then the number 12, or I can explicitly call that out. And you see that that is one floor. Now if it seems a bit too high, I can always you know, adjust the height, but that's the advantage of why we have Grasshopper in the first place, right? So go ahead and recolor this so I remember it. Slab height. Okay, so of course that just did one slab. We need multiple slabs, so I'm going to use a series component, which will create a series of numbers. And I'm gonna start this at zero. So I have one slab that's on the ground plane, right, the XY plane. And the step size is going to be this result over here, which is the slab height. And then count is really just the number of floors. So if I type in 15, I can call this uh, number of floors. And if I put that series into the Z component here, it's going to make a whole bunch of different values that then push this up in the Z direction to make multiple slabs, okay? So the next thing, if you notice in the tower itself, all these slabs are rotated, right? They're not just the same direction. So in order to rotate them, of course, now we can start using another component called the rotate component. Now, notice when I type in rotate, there's several different rotate commands that come up, but the one I'm gonna choose is just rotate an object in a plane. That seems to be the most standard and easiest one to use. So the geometry that we wanna rotate are these reference polyline curves. So I'm gonna put those in there. Now the angle I want to rotate, uh, I'm just going to try out a couple of angles now. So I'm just going to make a slider that goes from negative 90 to positive 90 degrees, right? So just a, just a basic slider. But when I put this in, really I'm thinking in degrees, but if I hover over here, it says rotation angle in radians. So I need to make sure that I right click on angle and turn that to degrees, okay? So now it's gonna make sure that I am rotating only in degrees, okay? And I can even call this rotation angle in degrees. Okay, but however, notice that when I do rotate it, 
I start to get doubles, right? So I really want to make sure I hide this. I can use Control Q to hide that. And now I have a rotated set of slabs. However, it was rotating all the slabs by the same amount. So I want to make sure that I rotate them by different amounts. And what I'm going to do is kind of mess this up a little bit by just rotating them by a random number. Okay, the best way to do that is to use a random number generator. So if I type random, you see I have this one here. This component requires three inputs, the range, the number, as in the number of values I need, and the seed, which kind of changes uh, what random values are produced in the end. So I'm going to first put a panel out here just to see what's going to come out on the other side. So range, it needs a domain. So I can construct domain. And I had a slider earlier that went from negative 90 to positive 90. So I'm going to do the same thing here is just make something called negative 90 as one panel and do the same except call one positive 90. And now you see that it makes a random number between negative 90 and positive 90. Here it's made 48. But I need more than just one number. So of course I could put in a value here and make five random numbers. Okay, but really I want the number of angles to match the number of floors that I've created up here, right? So the best way to do that, if I move this on the side, is to get the number of floors that I have. So currently I have 15 floors, right? And that's because I've used this component here, the series component, and I've put a slider of 15. So I'm going to use that slider and drag that over, okay? And put that in the number command. I can delete this one. I can go ahead and right click wire display faint just so I don't have a big thick wire going through the screen. All right, so now I have 15 random numbers, 15 to random angles that I have here. I am going to go ahead and use that as the rotation angle, okay? Put that under angle and you see that now I have a bunch of randomly rotated slabs. Okay, I'm going to delete this component, the slider here. Now you may be wondering, well, why didn't we worry about the third input here, which is plane? You see it's world x, y, and really that plane is the x, y plane, and is rotating this about that plane right here in the center at the origin. And since my slab was centered on the origin, I really didn't have to worry about it. If I do move the slab away, for example, then you'll notice it, it really messes up, and that's because it's trying to rotate about that center point. It may be more clear in an overhead view where you see it's always rotating about that plane. Okay, so that's why I kept the slab right centered over the origin like this. Okay, let's go back into perspective view. Notice that these are still curves, right? They're not really slabs yet. So one thing I can do to turn these into a slab is uh, use the extrude command. So double click, extrude. And you'll see that it needs a base curve, which I can put this curve in here. And it needs a direction. So since the slab is going to be thick in the up and down direction, we're just going to use the Z vector. Use that as the input. You notice that there's some change already starting to make that a little thick. Don't worry that it's not filled in yet. We'll deal with that in just a moment. But go ahead and let's put our slab thickness into this input here which is a factor. So my slab input, let's say, I'm gonna create a slider at 12. Okay, put that in and you'll see that it starts to make those slabs. Now, always rename as you go along. So this is slab thickness and the units here are inches. I keep all my sliders blue so I remember exactly where they are. Okay, the last thing you want to do for these slabs is to really just cap them off, right? They're open, they're just these open surfaces. So you can actually use the cap holes command, right? This component, when you plug in any poly surface, it searches for opportunities for it to just cap it off 
And if it does so, you should get a closed poly surface at the end of it. So there we go, closed B rep, successful at the end. I could hide this one so we're not doubling up. And you see that we've created a set of slabs, right? That are randomly rotated. Now, the last thing I like to do is I really don't like this red kind of, uh, you know, display here. I really like to prefer to uh, preview it in my own way. So I usually use the custom preview component over here and put in the geometry that I want to custom preview. And then it asks for a shader. So you can always use the swatch command. Put swatch in. And then you can change whatever color you want these slabs to be. I like to leave them white or, or gray or something like that. But then I also like to view the edges. So I usually do this component, vrep edges, which extracts all the edges of the slab. And then generally I copy and paste the shader. And I'll bring this over here for a moment. And I can put in the curves and view them separately as well. So I'm just holding shift to bring multiple wires in. I'll turn that to black. Now you see it almost looks like a Rhino object that I made in Rhino, but I'm going to hide these as well. Okay, last thing I need to do is make sure I remember that that's a display that I've done here. Okay, and that's basically my slabs. Now let's see what I can do with it. What can I mess with over here? So if I come back and look at my sliders, all the blues that I have, I can change the slab height. Okay, so this thing is either going to be really tall or really short, right? Depending on the slab height. I could also change the number of floors. So more floors or less floors, as you can see here. And what I can also do is change the slab thickness. One thing I didn't go over is I could, of course, change the rotation angle. So now these are some random numbers that have been applied, some random angles. However, this seed component here, you see it says seed two. I could enter another number. So if I create a slider, which is two, for example, and I put that in, of course, nothing should change. It's the number two, it's the same as before. However, if I start sliding this, you'll see that a different set of random numbers gets generated. So each of these seed numbers will then output a new set of random numbers through which you can rotate these slabs. Okay. Now, one of the things I've noticed is I don't want this thing to move up and down, right? So say I don't want the tower height to change. I want the height to be the same, but I want to only have, a, you know, maybe I want to change the number of floors, but keep the height the same. So in a case like that, you have your slab boundary right? And you want to move it up, but only up to a certain amount and then divide the rest. So one great way of doing something like that is instead of using the series component, which just starts building upon numbers one after the other. So it starts with a start number and then adds numbers to that as you go along, right? Instead, we're going to do the opposite where we start and uh, establish what is the smallest and the largest number, and then we can divide in between. Okay, so the way to do that one is the range component. So if I double click, type in range, you see it asks for a domain and a number of steps. Okay, now the number of steps could be the number of floors, so we don't really have to create any new component for that, but we will need a new domain. So I could double click and again, as usual, construct domain. And this time the domain actually has to do with the heights, right? Because we don't, that's the that's the numeric value that we're trying to limit. We're trying to limit the height of this tower. So I want the tower to start at zero, but then only go up to a certain amount. So say I like this height for the towers. Okay, and this height ends up at 2640. So maybe I'll start my domain at zero. Let's start it like this. But I want to end it at 2640, just to be consistent for now. Okay, so you should, you'll should you see that I get a range of numbers. If I copy and paste that panel over, you see that using the uh, range component, I start at 0, I end at 2640, and then I have a certain numbers, uh, sorry, number of numbers in between 
that interpolate between those two values. Now I could use the number of floors here that I have, put that into steps, and you'll see that it's pretty much doing the same thing, giving me a new list of numbers through which I can, of course, just you know apply these as my heights instead. So again, so here you see the series component goes into the factor which then moves the curves up in the Z direction. So instead of the series component providing those numbers, I'm going to use the range component now. And you should see that the height of the tower doesn't change. Oops, sorry, went off screen there. Let's come back, there we go. Okay, and now you see that the height of the tower is actually fixed, and I can change the number of floors, right? So I can squeeze in more floors there, or I can release and you know just adjust the number of floors that way. But the slab height really has no effect anymore because you can change the slab height and keep the uh, number of floors fixed and the height fixed. It's that mathematically just won't work. So we're just going to use the number of floors com component here. Now, what I could do is since I'm not using the series anymore, I could just highlight these and control E and disable them so that when I look at my script, I realize, okay, I don't really need to use these numbers here. Okay, so we can control the number of floors and the slab thickness still we have some control over and we can produce some random numbers that then rotate the slabs. Okay, so that's it for the slabs portion right now. The last thing I have to do is just make sure I know what the output is at the end. So I'm just going to create an empty BREP component, put this in here and just rename this as slabs. This is just so that later when I come back to the script, I know exactly what I was making, which is slabs. And then at the end of this, well, where are the slabs I'm trying to find? And they're right here. So that's the end of this part is just creating the slabs. In the next portion, we are going to go ahead and make these vertical gridding lines over here, which is the, it's almost like the it serves as columns, I guess, in a way, right? These angle columns that hold up the slabs in between each other. So that's the next tutorial. So stay tuned for that.